seen that glitch and a uh, little bit weaker at Super Smash Con, but always someone to worry about. On the other hand, though, somebody like you said, on a tear. The yeah. new guard coming out. Tilde is going to be a bad time here for Ling Ling. Tilde playing like a man possessed tonight. And I would not be surprised to see him give Ling Ling trouble. He's done it in the past. And he's looking like he's primed and ready to do it all over again. Because both of these gentlemen are fighting for their right to fight Zamba over in Grand Finals. Exactly. Like, the big thing with this matchup, it's kind of similar. It's very similar in aspects to how Zamba prevented Ling from putting any pressure on S.H.I.E.L.D. because of the fact that he has so many great options out of it. It's the same here. Peach can't float for free. Peach gets checked by Dash Attack, Short Hop Fair, and all of these great up tilts. And Ling has just been getting punished every time he tries to land. This is one of these spaces that's actually a bit of annoyance here for Ling Ling as Tilde continues to just capitalize on all this damage. I think a major thing we're both gonna have to look out for for Ling Ling is making sure that when he, any time he goes into the air, it's with a purpose. He cannot afford to recklessly float. Because if you're in Tilde's face and you're in the air, you're eating in there. You're eating an up tilt. You're eating a forward air. You're losing a stock. A good patience there from Tilde. Ling likes to go for down tilt to down smash at the ledge to bait somebody to do a get up option. You put that down tilt out. You put it in their head. Oh, that's a hitbox. I can try and punish that now with get up attack. Or try and jump. Doesn't work. Where are you going? What? Where are you going? Why are you down here? Why are you down here with me? This is my home. You can't come down here with me. Co capitalizing on the reverse edge guard. Granted, he's now he's still at up tilt back air percent, so Ling's got to be very careful about how he approaches here. Well, that was a very reckless way to lose a stock. And the fact that Ling Ling is ready to find reversals like that, I think, is a good sign for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ace, he's doing extremely well at that. He's making sure that he does not... Oh, there it is. Catching him, jumping from the ledge, taking no damage at all on this stock. All he needs is one good turn-up string, but he's got to find it first. There we go. Just getting that drag down. Actually, Air Dodge out of that to uh, uh, luckily avoid a little bit more, but what is it about Tilde just, just so good in this match right now? It's almost catching the back air. He, would, he probably would have chased them off stage after that. He's just doing a good job of making sure that the one buttons that he's putting out here and there is to start the damage like this. That was fantastic DI from Ling Ling. And but now he's got so much work ahead of him, dude. Yeah, exactly. He's got so much effort he needs to put to make sure he gets back in the game. But at this point, Tilde can afford to go off stage if he feels like it. He's got to stock up. Even like last time he got the reversal Nair. That don't matter here. Covers him on the roll in with the F tilt, pushing him away. Let's see what he does about the landing. But Ling, I, I feel like we're going to game two at this point with Ling. He's going to have to figure something out. Yep. A very good call on that. My word. The agenda is strong, baby. Somebody check on Zenyu. <laughs> Hey, listen, Dilde has been one of the forerunners of making sure that people understand that Falco is a dominating force. Mm -hmm. As he continues to do so, like we, we, we always knew that Falco was like a solid character, but never really saw anybody pilot it to super success outside of, you know, with Larry, it was running pretty well with the Falco, but it was always fundamentally strong Larry. Kofi, another one who was uh, piloting this character well, but didn't have the, like, the massive breakout performances. Tilde has been the one who's come out here and showed us, y'all really need to put some respect on Falco. Spacey's good, simple as that. But Tilde's still on that warpath to proving it. And he's not done with Ling Ling just yet. Game two's bringing us to Town and City, so there's a lot more aerial space for Ling to play with. And we've seen what he can do while he's got the protection of platforms available to him. Yeah, I already know why we came here too. Ling definitely was not allowed to go to FD. That, that stage was 100% banned. So we're gonna get this layout so you can get FD for at least a little bit. But still, the platforms stay there for a bit. And those side blast zones are much smaller. So he's able to, uh, like, Tilde does not care that much about this counter pick, especially after what he's able to do on that first stock. Yeah, it's also worth noting the, how well Falco can take advantage of those platforms in both rotations. Like, there is a lot of things that can happen as far as combo extensions and early kills, and you know Tilde's looking for freebies. Absolutely. Those up... Okay! He was, he was forced to recover high there. That was it. That was a stitch face coming. There was pretty much nothing you could do. You had to recover high. That was way too much damage for hey, all of that. That was a winky face. That's why it was so much on Reflect. 
One what? of these days, I really need someone to go through a top eight that Ling Ling's in and calculate the likelihood of all of the special vegetables he pulls. I can These tell you right have now. to be in human numbers. Oh my god, getting the roll on, punishing him. I got to tell you right now, somebody go ahead and take a look back to an old pink, fresh, delicious Ling Ling set where he pulled, I kid you not, 19 unique different turn of pulls, including four bombs and a grand finals reset. It's not okay. There we go, gets the down tilt to Nair. As he comes right back in, the defense, the, the discipline on shield from Tilde has been so good. He's refusing to allow him to establish anything. And now, trying to find a grab, looks for a jump out of Ling. Pretty much one good forward air from the ledge, or even this backer could possibly kill. Almost doing so. Once again, good DI from Ling Ling's kick alive. But for how long? Especially when you consider the stock lead that Tilde has. Insane. Like, I, 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 at this point, it's looking, there we go, that punish on the uh, fair on the shield. It's not, not too many ha people have the option to actually punish that Daisy Bomber on shield like that. He almost caught him with the jump off for up smash once again. And okay. once again, feigning with the turn up, Z dropping it, going in with the forward air. And then it's just immediately off the rip, just punishing him with that Phantasm on the roll. Ling has turned up in the hand. If he puts his back to him, like, there it is. If you put your back to him, all those Twitter clips that you see out of Ling where he zeroed his death people, it's while Turnip throws in the back. It's Tilde is not falling for it. He realizes what he wants, and he's not moving forward. Oh, oh, that could be it, that could be it. Oh, he doesn't get the full hit. That's exactly, I knew he was looking for that. Oh, he wanted to zero no. to death. He wanted to zero to death oh, so bad. That's why he, no. if you ever are fighting against a super competent Peach or Daisy, and they have a turn up, and they consistently put their back to you. That's what they want. They confirm into that hit, but I think because of the rage, he might have fell out possibly there at the end. That or he just went a little bit too far on the right. That down tilt would have led to one more a back uh, uh, side B, and we would have saw Ling even in this, uh, this setup. Literally one hit away. Yeah. And that's why Tilde is playing the way that he is. He's keeping a distance, but when he gets that one hit, that one up tilt or that one there, it's go time. Yep, that's all he needs. And you see Ling just taking a second, trying to figure out what he needs to do. Actually, Tilde as well. It's both of them taking a breather, but Tilde pretty much has this match to figure it out at this point. He understands how to keep Ling grounded. He knows how to answer float. He knows how to answer Ling as a whole. No tri flats available. We're going to go to small battlefield to so get some good music and a good possible end to this Losers Finals. And Tilde continues this crazy Losers run that he's been on. It's just been a mad dash to the finish line for Tilde. He's been stuffing out everyone, and I do mean everyone who's gotten in his way. That's insane. After going down the sky, it was so early at that too. Pretty much, actually, it was the exact same time that Light went down to Ad Adamus. That, that round was crazy. But Tilde out here is like, look, I am going to take this tournament. I want this. I am, he's playing so on point, he's refusing to overextend. He's refusing to let Ling find an opening. Ling pretty much needs to turn up to get in as we see him finally find the downer, but for how much more, let's see if he can do anything about it. He's just making sure to occupy aerial space with a hitbox now. And the fact that Ling Ling is forced to play so aggressively, I think is indicative of how well Tilde is dictating the tempo of this match. Exactly, like pace control is the name of the game. You want to make sure if you are forcing someone to constantly swing out of like the fact that they're super hard looking for an opening, that's great because then you can just force them to feel a little dumb as they swing on shield and you punish them for it. That back here just barely missing the hit on, on, on the on the shield pump. Ooh, that was a cute combination. It led to the Falco Phantasm going off stage. I turn up at that point even interrupting. Lingling Ling making very good use of items right now. Yeah, not so much on the landing though. He floated directly above him. The moment that floats there, you had no defensive option. You got to air dodge or something there. And uh, you see Tilde capitalizing on it so big and fading just far enough away from the forward air to not get punished. One of the interesting things that has to do with Peach and Daisy is their ability to microspace. Mm -hmm. They do so with their float. It's why they're such a good character. We've seen multiple times, countless times even, just in this set alone, why Tilde does not care about it. Because he anti-airs so well, and he's starting his combos while you're in the air. You're just putting yourself further into up tilt range, and up smash range for its call out. Once again, Tilde is finding it, and he's putting himself on route, not just to take the set 3 but to potentially three stock Ling Ling. Exactly the same as what we saw with the Adamus set in the last one. He went up two games, and then that Greninja swap came in, and he three stocked him. And the way Tilde is playing, he is so on such fire right now. The, the Daisy Bomber gonna come in though, get him a hit. We already know, Ling has revealed his cards. He knows that that, uh, that turn up combo exists, so he's not gonna give him that opportunity to find that hit he's looking for. 
it's what it's one thing to recognize that the turnip combo is live on the table. It is another thing to prevent Ling Ling from doing so. And if he's just gonna float around you, threaten Z drop uh, turnip back air mm -hmm. in neutral, or threaten the turnip, well, there's nothing you can do about that. You just have to continuously fight him off the stage. And look at his pressure that Tilde's been going for. It. Like, not only the shots to force Ling to stay grounded, but the fade in forwarders. Oh, gets the reversal up air, tries to find the back air. Wouldn't have killed or anything, but it would have put him deep off stage. Then it down air, tries to read another one. Tilde just looking to close this out right now. He doesn't want to let Ling get back into it. Ling finds a back air, but can he do much about it? No, he misses the forward smash. I'll throw in the turn up, but it's not going to interrupt the combo. I thought it was really cute from Ling Ling, but just not quick enough on the draw. This is looking, yeah, at this point, it's looking so rough. Ling pretty much at up tilt with the back air percent. Or even, oh, yeah, there it is. He's going to get the nair. He's not within range. He, he was out of position to be able to go for it. Tried to read the down air upwards, and an up smash will take it out pretty soon, too. He's yeah. going for it, but not able to find the mark, neither on turn up nor neutral air. Oh, no punish there on the daisy bump. It's kind of hard to punish in that position anyways, but you got to watch out. You got to play the platform uh, game well. Tilde is just moving back. He just needs that one good forward air as he sends that back. Forward air, speaking of, coming in from Ling. Look, we've seen crazier things happen. Uh, it, it's looking a bit stressful, but you can never count out Daisy, who has great combo damage. As yes. we see that end right now with the roll read on until they takes it 3-0. Just like that, Ling Ling is going to fall in third place. Invasion successful. <sighs> and that, everybody, brings a close to the Connecticut defense. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and cut the stream. Cut the stream. If there, cut the stream. <laughs> if there cut was stream. any two cut players it. to defend New England, <laughs> it would have been Light and Ling Ling. Ling Ling just happened to be the last man standing on the mm -hmm. job, but Tilde was not giving up. He's on point, man. And I, at this point, I think even if Light didn't lose to Adamus in uh, winners, the way Tilde was playing, if, if no upsets happen, how he has been playing all day, he might have just ended up sitting in grand finals regardless. Anyways, he might have beaten Light then too, because he's just he's just so on point right now. If you're not following Tilde, please go do so. Go support that man's stream, that man to add Tilde Fox. But he is incredible. And doing so with the character that not that many people will see. But you can see him plenty over at the Xeno Weeklies every single Wednesday, which will be happening every single Wednesday at 21 Lolo Street. I mean... Yeah, no, it's worth noting that what you're about to watch in Grand oh, yeah. Finals is a very <laughs> regular performance for folks at home in New York. That's, That's true. <laughs> yeah, we're... yeah. We're just watching, uh, th this is a premiere of, of Xeno Weeklies, which you can also find every, of course, by supporting House of 3000. Make sure you go ahead and check them out on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. The VODs go up pretty much instantly, and you can find all of the great clips from matches you missed, all the highlights you missed from them on Twitter. Make sure you again check them out. And of course, we're not done yet. When it comes to the Tri-State Locals, we got Fusion we got to talk about. That's brought to you by the Collision Series team, which has been on staff, not just as one of the other streams for this event, but helping run this alongside the gentlemen at the Towers. Yeah, 100%. Gladly, uh, I'm so glad to be able to work with them as we talk about. Uh, make sure you go ahead and check them out at Collision 2022, which will be happening in March from the 12th to 13th. It's the premier Tri-State National out here in Jersey, but do not move from your seats. We're gonna go for one more quick break for us to catch a quick breather as we get ready to get into grand finals. It is, well, like you said, just basically Xeno, whatever at this point. It's a New York celebration, but we gotta cut the break before we see it. So make sure to stay tight.